call to order this regular meeting of the Monument Board of Trustees. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ms. Hogan, will you take roll, please? Mayor Wilson. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott. Here. Trustee Clark. Trustee Lekind. Here. Trustee Romanello. Here. Trustee Stevens. Here. Okay, and Mr. Anderson, do we also have Mr. Rivera online? Uh, before us, okay. Before us, we have a agenda, consent agenda. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to modify the consent agenda to move item C to item 5C, taking it out of the consent agenda and adding it to the regular. Is there any questions, concerns with that? Is there any other modifications? Do I have a motion to approve the agenda as modified? Motion to approve as Do I have a second? Second. second. Motion and some seconds. Ms. Hogan, will you take roll, please? Trustee Clark? Mayor Wilson? Yes. Trustee Lekind? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott? Yes. Trustee Stevens? Yes. Trustee Romanella? Yes. That motion passes 6 0. First item on our, dish, uh, on our agenda, proclamation of Creek Week. Uh, I understand we have Mr. Banks here. Would, Mr. Banks, would you like to give us a one minute overview? Okay. <laughs> First, I wanna thank the Town of Monument. It's Jim Romanell, it's on our um, but uh, again, back to Creek Week. It's sorry, I cannot hear the speaker. There's no light. I'd say he's not listening now. Anderson, do you need a minute? Sorry, I <laughs> ramble on here. Um, it's about community, and it's about com bringing communities together for a common good. Those are sometimes overused phrases, but if you think of yourself as a part of, or if, rather, if you think of your watershed as part of your community, like you would your police station, your church, your fire station, Keeping them in uh, good working order is a community priority, no less so for your watershed. Your watershed and its, uh, its beauty, its availability is what keeps people coming to our region. It keeps our property values high. That's always the one I like to mention. All right, we good? All right. So for those that would like to participate, uh, Saturday, September 25th, uh, Third Street Trailhead, 9 a.m. to noon, is hosted by the Town of Monument and Monument, uh, excuse me, Monument Lake. Um, it says, uh, hosted by Dragonfly Paddle Yoga. That sounds like fun. Um, and what we typically do at uh, these sites, so uh, it says, I'm reading from Ali Shook, our outreach coordinator's email. Um, visit our website, Creek Week, or start with fountaincreek.org. That's the watershed and look for Creek Week. Um, and we need to, uh, in order to contact crew leaders, they will put you in contact uh, with the logistics. We'll supply uh, gloves, grabbers, garbage bags. We can do this safely. 
it, it really is a lot of fun. I've participated in a lot of these. We usually go out for a drink or a lunch afterwards. It's a great way to become involved in your community and do something very important. It was over a minute, I imagine. Excellent, thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Mayor Pro Tem Elliott, would you like to read the proclamation? Proclamations recognize Creekwood as the town of Moline for its fortunate extensive and diverse natural resources such as forests, grasslands, creeks, and a wide variety of open spaces and where Fountain Creek water resource and asset to the residents of the Fountain Creek region. The Fountain Creek watershed flood control and Greenway District is partnering with Springs, El Paso County, Pueblo County, the cities of Manitou Springs, Fountain, and the towns of Monument and Green Mountain Falls, and numerous community organizations to coordinate the 8th Annual Creek Week Cleanup, which will encourage the protection, restoration, and maintenance of the Fountain Creek watershed. And whereas this ninth day litter cleanup effort runs September 25th, nine day litter cleanup effort, runs from September 25th through October 3rd, 2021 throughout the watershed and is now the largest cleanup effort in our state. And whereas Creek Week programs and activities are designed to raise awareness about the littering issue within our watershed, to encourage organizations and individuals to collect litter and debris to make Fountain Creek and the watershed cleaner and safer. And whereas businesses, churches, schools, nonprofits, neighborhood associations, youth groups, service clubs, and individuals are encouraged to form a creek crew to clean up at a Creek Week project site. And whereas Creek Week litter removal activities will reduce pollution in our creeks and clogs in our waterways that can lead to flooding, provide for a safer drinking water supply, and enhance wildlife habitat and property values. Now, therefore, the Board of Trustees of the Town of Monument hereby proclaims September 25th to October 3rd, 2021 as Creek Week and encourages our citizens to help protect, restore, and maintain our waterways by participating in Creek Week activities. Proclaim the seventh day of September, 2021. Did any board members have any questions or concerns about the proclamation? Consider it pro proclaimed. Item four, recognition, uh, Ron Rathburn, Mr. For Mr. Foreman. Can you hear me, Mitch? All right. Um, yeah, I can hear you. Good. So I've got uh, Ron Rathburn up here, and I think there's a couple of people in here that probably have worked at several different municipalities for 35 years. But I would challenge anybody, is there one person you know that's worked at one municipality for 35 years? This man right here, Ron Rathburn, has been for 35 years. We had a party for him. We threw a, uh, we actually threw it for all the employees, but we kind of made it special for Ron. Billy, he took it out yesterday and got skunked. Man, he got skunked. But uh, anyway, Ron's done a great job for us. Uh, you know, ever since I've been here, uh, one of my advisors and stuff, we've talked. I know Ron tells me something. I know it's about it. I don't know where he's got the experience he's been here. He knows where the sewer line is. Hold it in. Uh, does a great job for us. I'm going to read you his bio. I kind of wanted to have a personal touch to this. Uh, really great friend. Let me, let me talk about his bio real quick. Uh, we're here tonight to recognize the man who is integral part of Town of Monument Public Works Department. Ron has been serving the Town of Monument for 35 years. Ron's a lifelong resident of Monument 
where he continues to reside with his wife, Jenny. Jenny, stand up. Everybody say hi. Yay, Jenny. So uh, Ron served in the U.S. Marine Corps. Because <laughs> he's a Marine too. Prior to coming to work for the town where values, integrity, and the ability to adapt to changing conditions are instilled in the Marines through their experience and training. Ron's experience here with the Public Works Department helped the town overcome many challenges, and he has always contributed to making the town a great place to live and raise. I think I remember the first time we met, about 12 feet in a hole, in the knee deep in water. By the start of the experience and expertise has provided the he provides to the town makes us one. Makes him one of the most valuable employees we have. The versatility, versatility all allows him to excel in any position in the public works department. He's a strong mentor to the younger generation, well respected in his field. Ron's decision making skills are an asset to our town. Ron has received numerous letters from residents describing him as a patient, responsive, and professional in solving issues in the community. Never had one complaint about him. Lot of attaboys. Call up and say, "Hey, Ron, you're doing a great job." Uh, during Ron's tenure, he's worked to fix water main, bre main breaks and other issues that kept him away from his family. Ron's wife, Jenny, and daughter Bailey. Bailey, I think you're here. There's Bailey. Can attest to the nights where he would come home very late, or sometimes early the next day, due to trying to solve an issue with the water system, or sometimes getting called out to the state by the state patrol. Or police department to assist with needing heavy equipment due to highway incidents. Ron has met all challenges that he's been faced with and represents the best of our town staff. Sincere thanks and great go out to Ron for 35 years of sacrifice, effort, and loyalty to the town of Monument. Hey, would you like to say something? Well, you know, it is a blessing to have an employee like this, especially somebody that uh, actually when I started working town, I think I actually knew Ron before that and didn't know Ron. Right around the same time, the way he handled himself was amazing to not only staff and his co sitting there claiming I'm doing the same thing. Look the same. But I, I just, like I said, the town is so blessed to have people like this. Just what you can do. What you can do. One of the facts that a lot of people is the one that as a entry level uh, water operator and kind of, but he taught me every day in the first couple of years how to handle situations, how not to get stressed out, how to find the right people. So I just want to thank him for the information they've provided and the skills that he's taught me as I've worked my way.
<laughs> Is this kind of like saying you spend enough time at work? Excellent. Thank you for joining us today, sir. Sure. Next item on the agenda, resolution number 50-2021. Resolution approving an IGA with CDOT. Mr. Tharnish. Yes, the resolution you have in front of you tonight is part of the process that CDOT requires whenever they issue uh, grant type money. Uh, they had uh, approached us quite a while ago and said there was about $200,000 available that could be used on a road project if you were shovel ready. And typically we have multiple projects that are shovel ready just waiting for budget. So the IGA you have in front of you is that requirement. Uh, this uh, this grant that we're going to receive does not require a local match at all. It's purely money they're going to give us to do a large stretch of Old Denver Road between uh, Creek Valley Circle and then we're going to take it as far south as we can go with the $200,000. So any questions on the IGA? Trustee Clark. We're going to go uh, both lanes, north and southbound, as far south as 200,000 will get us, which we think is somewhere in the neighborhood of Ranchero Drive or possibly Buffalo. Uh, there's a short stretch between uh, where we're going to end this and the culverts is, I believe it's Heach Out Creek. And there's also a stretch between Santa Fe Avenue coming north to the second street and that it's likely fit into next year's budget based on priorities. Uh, we have spent all the money for asphalt overlay this year. This was money we didn't know about and suddenly became available. So we threw a project out there to see if it would meet some of that. There's no right away acquisition involved. There's no survey work. It's simply a overlay type project that we do on a heavier traveled roads. Well, oh, Court, can I just remind the board to speak into the microphones? It's a little difficult for the audience online to hear. Okay. Other. Other questions from the board? Hearing none, I'll look for a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number 50-2021, a resolution approving an IGA with CDOT and the Town of Monument to access a $200,000 grant for an overlay project on Old Denver Road. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Hogan, will you take roll? Trustee Lekind? Yes. Trustee Romanello? Yes. 
Trustee Stevens? Yes. Trustee Clark? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott? Yes. Mayor Wilson? Yes. That motion passes 6 0. Uh, item 5B, resolution number 51 2021, a resolution approving uh, a contract with Martin Marietta for Old Denver Highway. Mr. Tharnish. Yes, this resolution follows closely on the previous one. In order to uh, meet the deadlines and the timing as receiving this grant funding, uh, we decided to go with the same contractor we used this year for other overlay projects. They were still in the area doing other jobs and uh, honored the same pricing structure that we used throughout the summer. So this is a contract with Martin Marietta to do the exact project that I described. Um, so there a, there's not a bid process for that. The, the, our, our contract and purchasing policy has a lot of options in it. One of the ones is if you have a contractor that has previous state bid, state bid, GSA that's, contracts, then you're allowed to go with them and forego the bid process, but you're usually getting the, about the lowest price you can get if you're going with Companies like this that do other government. Right, that's what I was looking for was state bid. Are there other questions from the board? Seeing none, um, do we have a motion? I move to approve resolution number 51-2021, a resolution approving a contract with Martin Marietta for the old Denver Highway or Road Overlay project subject to receiving the CDOT grant funding in the amount of two hundred thousand dollars. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Hogan. Trustee Stevens. Yes. Trustee Lakind. Yes. Trustee Romanello. Yes. Trustee Clark. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott. Yes. Mayor Wilson. Yes. Moving on to five C resolution number fifty two twenty twenty one. A resolution approving a change order to the contract with Nora Concrete for Raspberry Lane. Mr. Tharnish. Yes, this resolution has come about in the last month and what it encompasses is on the Raspberry Lane project, we have, uh, we had a situation on North Monument Lake Road where the current water main on our Asville drawings from quite a long time ago showed the line at five to six feet reality is it was down around nine feet. That caused a bunch of issues as far as equipment and trying to get that up over to the other side of the, the entrance to that subdivision. So we made a decision that the best way to approach this is to uh, go ahead and just put a new section of water main from one entrance to the other because the existing lines are gonna end up, I should say, Water means going west will be at a five foot elevation tank that we're going to put out west. And it made sense to align this with that line. The, um, and we're going to also make it a 12 inch, existing is eight inch. So there's a price change for the amount of distance. And because it's at a peak of a hill, we have to add an air vent to in case any air gets entrapped in the line. Additional uh, isolation valves. The second part of this change order is pushing 140 feet of water main to the west of the current entrance. And again, that's to tie into the section of the tank that's coming in. Questions on this? Mr. Tarnish, so was it just not recorded that that one line was nine nine feet deep? And in the Raspberry Lane subdivision, we, we we get surprised almost every day. There are things hidden there, things that we, we and give you a small little snapshot. I had a service line coming off one of the units on that faces North Monument Lake Road, and it was the westernmost unit. The service line for that crosses the other three units and comes out on Raspberry Lane on the side. Why you would not just go 20 feet out into the road where the main is and go across three other units. So they weren't expecting that. So when they went to digging, they hit it. So that was the first of many things that, that had been hidden that were unmarked or mapped. We've hit power lines on the ground that aren't marked. 
sewer lines that are the wrong elevation, just things that, there's a reason why that neighborhood has is, is had so many water main breaks over the years. It's because things are not where, where they were supposed to be when they put it in the ground 50 years ago. So we're correct. This whole project is correcting all those, putting things where they're supposed to be, and GPS, everything we put. And we'll have accurate maps for that next generation of operators that have to look out for us. Okay. And the, so that last one you were talking about, the service line crossing over. Yes. That's the four additional. That's one of the four additional. Yes. By by upgrading the main on North Mont to 12 inch and running a new line. All we're going to do is uh, those four additional units will just cut right with valves in their driveways are on a new line at five foot elevation out to the new main. And and everything else, rather than trying to dig up something that's. And barren. what's the main size coming from the tank? It's going to be 12 inches. It's so it's going to yes. be universal. It's going to match. Inch. Yes. Okay. Additional questions from the board. How old is that infrastructure? Close to 50 years. Talk in the early 70s, probably are no longer. But I don't know. Back then, nobody was really good at keeping records, much less maps. And we have to use today's technology to find what we can, but then there's supposed to be something there, but you can't find it. So, and these funds are, are coming out of the the COP, COP bond funds, yes. Water enterprise bonds. Yes. And it, does this still keep us under what we, is the 128,000 in addition to what we budgeted for it or were we under budget prior? We, were, we, were, we were slightly under budget, but once the uh, bids came in, I think at 909, I think was our award, contract award, uh, adding 128 puts us just over a million, but I, I tell you the truth, I think get further along in this project, there, there may be a few unexpected things that come up. And we knew going in that we were going to have surprises and had to correct things that we didn't plan on. But there's enough of the, of the COP bond projects that are coming in under budget that the excess funds, this will go within that, well within our budget limits. And all I'll, the projects. And I'll say that I have heard Tom over the years mention Raspberry Lane as, as water issues multiple times. So I wouldn't say this is a huge surprise. Well, the, the running joke is one of my assistant guys, Joe, he always says that uh, when he used to get called out for a water break, his kids would always ask him, Dad, is it Raspberry Lane? <laughs> <laughs> no, because that's, that's, that's responsible for by far for the majority. Yes, everything um, from the every individual, now we added those four units, so there's 52 units there that will have everything from their isolation valve in the driveway out to the main, including the main, will all be new set at the right elevation. I would hope so, yes. Okay, any other questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, I'll take a motion. Take a motion to approve resolution number 52-2021, resolution approving a change order to the contract concrete for the Raspberry Lane Street and Water. Second. We have a motion and a second, Ms. Hogan. Trustee Romanello? Yes. Mayor Wilson? Yes. Trustee Lakind? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott? Yes. Trustee Stevens? Yes. Trustee Clark? Yes. That motion passes 6 0. That takes us to item four, discussion item. Um, for discussion item 6A, filling a vacancy on the Board of Trustees. This is a board driven process, but I would like uh, Mr. Rivera just to give us. A 
couple pointers on this project or on this process um, for legal purposes. Uh, Mr. Rivera. Good evening, board. Thank you, and thank you for allowing me to attend virtually. I I'll be brief, but because there's not much guidance provided by the statute, the operative statute is CRS 314303. And what that statute does is it permits the board to either uh, choose to fill a vac vacancy by appointment or by special election. Or, uh, and then um, if a decision is not made within 60 days, that statute requires um, the holding of a special election to fill the vacancy. Um, that's pretty much it uh, in terms of, of uh, guidance. Uh, in terms of how the selection process works, it's by simple majority uh, vote of a motion. So you would simply uh, s select somebody and say, I move to appoint uh, um, Jane Doe as uh, as a uh, to uh, fill the vacancy, and then you'd have a vote on it and proceed. Uh, the qualifications are the same qualifications as for a board of trustee uh, generally, which is to, uh, uh, of course, be a citizen, to be 18 plus years of age on the date of their appointment, to be a resident of the town for the last 12 months, and, and those are, are basically the only requirements. Um, and then I do know that uh, at least one of the applicants is on the planning commission. If that particular applicant is selected, uh, that particular applicant would be required to resign from the planning commission pursuant to monument municipal code 2.04.020 C as in cat, um, which basically requires um, a, a, the board of trustees to hold no other position with the town. Are there any questions? Questions from the board? Mr. Trustee Clark. Mr. Rivera, Mr. Rivera, thank you for that explanation. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it was a requirement of any kind that the uh, stipulation that a resume be put forward to the applicant's interest letter. Is that a requirement of the law? Um, no. Um, my, my understanding, and I haven't, I have to specifically look at the um, the resolution that was before the board uh, about a month ago, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, in which the board decided to uh, fill this vacancy by appointment. And in that resolution, there was some uh, guidance uh, regarding uh, uh, the, the process by which folks would make their interests known. And I, I'll have to defer to Ms. Hogan on, on the specifics of that, but I do believe that there was a requirement, generally speaking, that, that they uh, somehow share their interest in this position with uh, the town, specifically the town clerk, and that they provide some background information, but I don't recall uh, the verbiage of that resolution uh, exactly, and I would defer to Ms. Hogan on, on the, specifics, the specifics of that language. Mrs. Hogan, it require a resume to be published outside of the town of Monument? I met with Mr. Foreman and Mayor Wilson to ask how I could assist the Board of Trustees in this process. And that resolution was drafted with their guidance and how they wanted the process to go forward. Thank you. So I guess I have a question in the day and age with etc. We resumes of these individuals position site information. No. They were all redacted. Some I understand the the telephone number is concerned because there's a lot of personal information lies that possibly be just inappropriate finding it there I'd like to suggest in the future perhaps that the resumes themselves be withheld from the site for consumption considering that I think that can be considered. Any other questions for Mr. Rivera, Rivera before we move forward? Okay, thank you, Mr. Rivera. Um, so you all have had the opportunity to look over the, the letters of interest and the resumes. At this time, if the board is in agreement, like I said, this is kind of board driven, I would like to invite up the applicants that may be present 
to give a one minute, um, one minute of background and answer any questions the board may have for them. Agreements with that? Sounds good. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> Mr. Kimple, are you here? Mr. Kimple, if you'd just give us a, a minute or two on your interest and, and kind of what's behind it. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, Board of Trustees, other applicants. Um, interest is to serve the town and its people. Previous, previously, I was on the Planning Commission. I stepped down from that when I ran for Board of Trustees in the past. Was not elected. I did not participate in the last election at that time because I was uh, being interviewed for jobs in Washington, D.C., North Carolina, and Florida. So I didn't want to waste the, uh, the Board of Trustees time, nor did I want to uh, mislead any of the residents in the town by possibly being elected and then having to step down uh, several months afterwards. It worked out where I actually uh, had a job offer down in Fort Carson where I'm the airfield manager. <clears throat> so that's gonna keep me here for uh, quite some time because I'm pretty happy with that job wife wants to stay here of the town of Monument, uh, taking part in a, a community, taking part in uh, town events in the past. So my desire to serve the community, saw the opportunity, I felt compelled to submit my application, submit my name up, resume, as I've had done in the past. Thank you. Questions from the board? Mr. Kimple, thank you for uh, your interest. Um, nice to see you again. Um, I do have a question and that is, what are the two top concerns that you have related to the town's future? My two top concerns, number one is infrastructure to meet the uh, growth of the town and make sure that we look at not only the funding that we appropriate the, uh, the right amount of funding to uh, make sure that we take care of our infrastructure itself. With community growth comes all with uh, other concerns and other issues. I believe in uh, smart growth, um, not just overpopulating and oversaturating. And our resources are uh, very finite. So I would like to see that balanced as well. Another issue is just listening to the town people and try to uh, listen to their needs, their desires, and what they want to hear. Not only our elected officials take up, tackle, along with the town staff and utilizing all those resources, but to share information to the town itself. I think the Board of Trustees saw an overwhelming response when they held the town, uh, the town meeting at the, at the church. It was uh, lively, it was very spirited. Um, I thought a lot of people that stepped up to talk brought up some very valid key points that might have been overlooked. I believe in uh, the trust but verify method, attention to details, what I learned after being in the military for 30 years. So that's what I would bring to the uh, Board of Trustees and for the town. Other questions from the board? Are you familiar with the uh, ordinance we passed in January uh, regarding making Monument a sanctuary city for business? Yes. Would you have voted for that? I would have voted for it as a sanctuary city, but I would have, uh, have liked to see it a little bit more uh, define clarification for it. Uh, I, I just had the opportunity to speak to a lot of people, not only my community, but around on the east side and west side. Uh, small businesses are worried about a few things that are in that language, uh, but that can also also be addressed to be cleaned up as well. 
Um, how do you feel about the uh, ballot initiatives coming up on the uh, half cent uh, increase in sales tax for police and the vote to home rule? I'll address the vote for home rule first. I, I like the idea, I like the concept of what it's trying to do, but I also think that, because um, I've posted this on, on a, on a uh, social media site, I also believe that that is a good thing to do. However, when you look at the vote that's gonna come up in November, and then if it's passed, then the panel that's going to be elected, they have a year to finalize before it's reviewed and that's passed. So you're looking at approximately a year and a half. I think that that's a good thing. In a, in, but I also think that in that year and a half, there's going to be organizations or builders come to the come to the planning commission and come to the board of trustees with things that they want to develop that is going to lead to more spirited um, discussions from town people with the, to the board of trustees so in that in that time frame in that in the meantime why isn't the planning commission recommending changes to some of the ordinances or we can have some town people rep, uh, recommend some changes. I plan on bringing some of those up, some small things up tomorrow at the Planning Commission to take up for the Planning Commission to decide and determine and then bring it to the Board of Trustees to vote on now to make change. And that's kind of fixing some of the town ordinances and some of the, what I see as loopholes that are in the, that are kind of, Right now, I believe that a lot of the ordinances are in favor of the builder, not the, not the community. So I would like to see some of those things fixed and addressed. And you can do that now, vice waiting a year and a half. With the, um, with the tax increase, with growth, again, infrastructure, and uh, I understand having listened to uh, the chief talk about what he wants to do with his uh, police force and safety and, and security is probably number one on everyone's mind. Uh, I do believe that uh, subtle tax increase would help that, but I would also like to see to make sure that the budget overall for the town is balanced appropriately. Again, addressing some of the infrastructure needs. In the past, when I had sat on the planning commission, I saw a lot of things get a lot of things in the town for infrastructure kind of get kicked to the side projects because sitting listening to the uh, board of trustees uh, discuss budget matters you had to times rob peter to save paul so i, I would like to try to see a better balance of that uh, Um, in, in wake of uh, COVID, you know, executive orders and everything else, and who knows what's going to happen in the future, how important is it to you to protect our Constitution, Bill of Rights, and personal liberties? Uh, it's extremely important to uh, protect people's rights. But I will say that I do believe in the signs. Um, I know and it's a very hot topic whether or not you have kids going to schools or you don't. I just believe in the sign and, and the signs. I got my shots almost immediately. I do believe in the vaccine. I do believe in vaccination. Does it, does it uh, keep you from getting the COVID? No, but does it mitigate? Yes. And hopefully prevent you from occupying hospital bed spaces for someone else in, in, that needs critical care. Trustee Clark. Trustee Clark, I can't hear any of your question. My, my mic isn't working. I hear you there. Thank you. Thanks. So what, what I asked it was if Mr. Kimple could get us or give us an example. Well, with development right now that's going on in the town, uh, as an example, there's a percentage requirement of having landscaped yards in residence. 
the residential uh, or homes and in commercial properties. With water, water, everyone's worried about water. I would encourage that we don't need that percentage. I would encourage that we go to the, uh, maybe give credit or, or something along that line. Because of the developer, developers come here and I've listened to them time and time again, and they try to sell, we're gonna have a beautiful landscaped residential property. We're gonna have, we're gonna have fields, we're gonna have parks which is great, and then we're gonna have trails. Well, who's gonna maintain those tra trails when the developer leaves? That's either on the town of Monument or it goes into uh, Triview's responsibility or even El Paso County. I've talked, I've talked, to, El, I talked to El Paso County about the two designated trails that we have in, in Monument itself. One was planned to go through Promontory Point, now it's planned to go around. It's supposed to be eight miles long. They have approximately 1.4 miles completed, and it's on the El Paso County website. El Paso County says they don't have the money to complete it. So who's going to maintain that? With the landscaping, again, who's paying that? Who's paying those water bills? The, res, the residents, uh, because they're required to have landscaped yards. So I would say maybe go to a uh, encourage or highly recommend or change that percentage and put into the ordinance uh, having a Zeriscape instead. Having uh, served 30 years in the military, I've seen people that can handle uh, guns with this, uh, and I've seen people that can't. And I had to support both as a leader. I personally do not own a firearm. In a, I grew up in a uh, location uh, that my father did not, he wasn't a hunter and he didn't believe in guns. But yet I joined the military and I handled them all the time. So, uh, but I don't own any right now. I don't plan on owning any. That doesn't mean that I don't respect and appreciate someone that has, that has guns. Yes, I believe the right for people to bear arms and their second, uh, their second amendment right, their constitutional rights. Again, I just, I don't own any. I respect others that do and that they have that belief and feeling that say it. Their emotional feeling, they, a lot of people get very emotionally tied to that. And I, I, I respect that. I don't, I, don't, I don't argue with it. I don't disagree with it. I, I respect it. For that, for that circumstance about the red flag warning, I heard some of the reasons uh, from the other chief that uh, used to be in office, uh, his rationale for why he didn't support it. I, I would have voted yes for it. Okay, is there any other questions from the board? I have a quick question. I know you've been on the board since, I mean, I, since I've been here, I've seen you, uh, but how long of a resident yes, have you been in Monument? Uh, I retired from the military in 2016 uh, in the state of Hawaii. Uh, in 2014, I had already made my decision to move here and uh, actually tricked my wife into moving to Colorado. I brought her here in July, if the four days when it was uh, blue sky, clear and sunny. She goes, is this like this year round? I said, of course it is. It's nice and sunny year round. Uh, she's not familiar with snow. Uh, so she asked how much it snowed. I said, not that much. So I arrived here in March of 2016 after purchasing the home that we're in in the 2015 timeframe. She immediately, uh, as soon as we got here, we had that uh, almost two feet monument. 
I was holding the phone out to here, getting cursed out. I was going to say, are you still married? <laughs> yes. Yes. She's sticking with me, uh, uh, you know, through and through, and she fully supports me doing this. I think we've seen her at some of the meetings before. Uh, she's a teacher here, so she's fully invested in kind of monument as well. Uh, Trustee Lakine, did you have any questions before we wrap up this particular interview? No, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kimple. Okay. Uh, Ms. Matthews. Uh, Officer Case, we don't have anybody waiting in the hall or okay. one more Ms. Matthews. Uh, Mr. Anderson, do we have anybody online by that name? Okay. We will move on. Uh, Ms. Shoning, and excuse me if I did not pronounce that correctly. What was that again? Shoning, okay. You would give us... Uh, one to two minutes about your interest. Yes, I um, I actually am originally from the Chicago area, and I've been in this area now since 16, actually March of 2016 also. And I just have a sincere appreciation for the people of Monument, the town of Monument. Um, in early 2020, I closed a restaurant, which sounds a little unfortunate, but it was actually a blessing because I realized at that time that I actually have a really loud voice and I can get involved and I can make things happen. And so I've been doing just that since then. And I've been helping out with several campaigns and several local causes and state causes and national causes. And when this vacancy came up, I thought, well, there's probably no better way to get involved in local community. So that's why I'm here today. Okay. Questions from the board? Go for it. You get the benefit of being second. If I was out there, I'd want to be last. You're, you're, you know everybody's questions. You know what's coming, right? It'd be a lot easier. I'm going to ask you the same questions. Um, uh, how would are you familiar with what we passed in in January of 21, and how would you have voted? Yes, I would have resoundingly. Okay, it was awesome. And and about and this one's a little bit off that, but I mean on, on the the ballots that are coming up on home rule and half cent tax increase for police. How do you how would you feel about? Well, I realize it's a delicate balance because the police budget is currently what almost 1.5 million and it needs to get to three. So the balance is not only collecting that money, but collecting that money from the taxpayer in the current environment. And I think that that's going to be, that's just a difficult task right now um, to have people feel good about that. I, I participated in the survey and I was for it. Um, I personally am for it, but it doesn't necessarily matter how I feel. It's up to the voters in this case. So, uh, what about home rule? I, what do you, in regards to? Oh, on, on on the ballot measure for home rule, are you are you in favor of us going to home rule? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and then the last question again is with you know uh, all the uncertainty with what you know any executive orders or future you know, uh, issues can come up with COVID on our, our protecting our Constitution, Bill of Rights, and personal liberties. How do you feel about that? It's one of the most important things that we're all facing right now. And my feelings don't really matter when we're talking about the Constitution. The Constitution's there, and it's not for me to interpret. Those are our rights. And while, you know, I appreciate feelings like Mr. Kimple's in regards to hospital beds and, and things like that. Again, those are feelings, those are thoughts, but those aren't reflected in our U.S. Constitution, so. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions from the board? I have a couple questions. Yes. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, but my questions are a little different than the prior candidate because what we were providing in our board packet is a little bit more than what we received from the others, and that is you have a couple letters of recommendation. Um, so I'd like to ask you, what is your personal professional experience with Holly Williams and how does she come to write a letter of recommendation for you? Yes, um, I've known Holly Williams in several different capacities. I am heavily involved in the local GOP. So I would say that I help 
all the candidates that need help. Um, I walked in a parade for Mrs. Williams before I even knew her very well. And then I came to know her through basically everybody in local politics. We just ran into each other at the same events. Um, and then I started helping with issues here and there. I was called to get involved in Tabor and to support an initiative um, or to not support an initiative to put uh, Tabor raise out on the ballot. And despite the fact that I adamantly disagreed with Commissioner Williams, I was able to talk to her about it in a professional manner and um, for, at some length, and we continue to meet about this Tabor issue. And so our relationship is professional and despite the differences we have, we are able to accomplish things and help local candidates get elected. Thank you. Uh, I do have a question about uh, Mayor Huseman from Commerce City, Colorado, and what is your professional relationship with him? Uh, he actually, um, I became friends with him like I became friends with a lot of people on social media. And then I got to know him and he realized that I have some, I do legal research from home in my spare time. So Mayor Huseman would call on me from time to time to help him with certain initiatives in Commerce City. And um, from there, I got involved in a a lot of things up north and some surrounding counties, but that's basically our professional relationship is that he's called on me to help him um, things that have happened in Commerce City, specifically some building developments and some issues up there. Okay, my last question, which is what you heard pre previously is, what are your two major concerns that you have about the future of the Town of Monument? Um, I would say my two biggest concerns would be figuring out how to have sustainable water in the long run. Um, we've obviously got several different issues that are being handled in, in multiple different ways. And while I don't claim to be a water expert, I think it's gonna take um, excellent leadership and being able to listen to the engineers, listen to the attorneys, um, find the appropriate solutions. And then for me, the other biggest issue would be the police. I think that that's gonna be an emerging issue in every town and it's being overlooked in this political climate. Um, we're experiencing more homelessness. It's starting to pop up in Monument. It's creeping up north in the springs. Um, we're going to experience crime. We see that already. So this is an issue we cannot ignore. And as a mother of a five and a six-year-old, for me, it's a pressing concern because I love this town. I love that right now I can fall asleep with my doors unlocked and I want that to continue to be the case. I do have one more question, <laughs> and that is we did have somebody resign from the board recently because she needed to relocate, but that wasn't going to be for another six months or so. And so she wasn't able to be present for the board meetings due to child care issues. Will you be able to be present for the board meetings? Yes, okay. every single meeting. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I'll ask my same question. How long have you been a resident of mine? I've been a resident of Monument, so Funny story, I've been in Monument altogether since 2016, or Palmer Lake, I did live in Palmer Lake. Um, but I did move to Denver briefly last year. So I have been here a year, don't worry. But I did move to Denver briefly um, over a year ago because I thought it would be fun to live in a larger city. And that's one of the reasons, that's one of the things that brings me here today is that it's not fun to live in a larger city. And that's one of the things that I wanna keep out of here and continue to make sure that this is a safe town and it's it's not run like Denver. But um, so yeah, this, this last time I've been here for a year and then before that I've been in this area since 2016. Oh. My very first answer is the same as it was to Trustee Romanillo's question, which is that my feelings really don't matter. It's in the Constitution. Um, but our rights are absolute. As far as the red flag law, yes, I would have voted. There's absolutely nothing in the Constitution that tells you that you can take away someone's firearms for those reasons. So. I, off the top of my head, would say I wish that I could change the way 
that some of the um, term limitations were. Not necessarily a monument locally decided issue all the time, but I, uh, I think that sometimes there are fluctuations that happen too often and are unnatural for government bodies. So I'd actually like to see a situation where um, trustees and or the mayor could stay on for a longer period of time. Yeah. Uh, Trustee Lakine, did you have any questions? Nope. Okay. Uh, you uh, you're all you all started the questions and got them all than I could have thought of anyway. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. White. If you would give us a minute or two on on your interest in this. I'd be happy to. Okay. So again, I'm Sean White and um, about me. Okay. Personally, um, I grew up in, I'm a native uh, K through 12 at Lewis Palmer. Um, and uh, I'm married, have three kids, uh, one in college and two who are currently attending Lewis Palmer. One who actually had a calculus teacher that I had. So it's pretty crazy. I'm sure that made her feel old. Um, and uh, um, I grew up here um, taking this place for granted because I grew up here. And then I joined the military. So professionally, I joined the military, was in the Air Force, um, got a degree in civil engineering and uh, did uh, engineering public works uh, activities for the United States Air Force for uh, a little over 11 years. Um, discussions we had tonight about uh, paving and water lines and where are the water lines and why are we hitting them? I, more than a decade of those kinds of conversations. Um, but I had the chance to travel the world, see, uh, live in a tropical island, live in big cities, live in the desert, lived all over. And when I finally left the military, I realized that um, the best place in the world that I ever lived was right here back home in my hometown. So I uh, brought my family back here and uh, it was when I came back and realized how precious the quality of this town was to me that I decided to go get a master's in urban planning and join the planning commission a little over a year ago. Um, I'm now the vice chairman of the planning commission. And I did that because I recognize and no longer take for granted how awesome and incredible this town is. And uh, that what drove me to the planning commission to protect the, the character and the qualities that are in this town uh, are now leading to expand that vision, not just development, but all of the factors that influence the, the quality of life in a town. And I think I could do that with more effectiveness. Um, the Board of Trustees now seeking the position on the Board of Trustees. Okay, thank you. Go ahead and start again. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, you, I think you already know the questions, right? Um, uh, how do you feel about the ballot measures upcoming? Um, uh, remind me again on the. Oh, yeah, we have a half cent police tax potentially to give the police more money, and then home rule. Okay, gotcha. Oh, got. So, um, I'm I'm a big advocate of uh, self determination. I believe that communities need to have the ability to decide what's best for them. I think that one size fits all um, is not the best approach for uh, communities. So, I'm I'm very much. Um, advocate for home rule and having more self-determination. As far as the uh, the tax for the police force, um, taxes aren't wonderful. No one no one advocates for that. I, I like the fact that it's a consumption tax and a lot of those that commute through uh, Monument uh, on their way to and from Denver will, will help uh, subsidize that. Uh, but I also recognize that we have a social contract when we live in a community and what makes a community great is the fact that it's a safe community. And so I think it's critical that we take um, the opportunity to ensure that our police force can provide the public safety that the residents um, require and expect of, of the town. So I am for it. And then I can combine the next two uh, for the interest of time and they're, they're similarly related. The ordinance that we passed in January uh, to, to try to protect business and then also in as far as future in the future protecting our constitution bill of rights and personal liberties from any encroachment of executive orders etc how do you feel about that 
Yeah, or what's your I'll, opinion there? I'll answer it kind of in a similar way. Um, I think self-determination is important, and I think this community decides that uh, it needs to make decisions for its businesses. Um, it's factoring in um, public health uh, while it makes that deliberate decision. For it, and I would have voted for it. And, uh, sorry, what was the second part of the question? So. In the future, in protecting our, our, our liberties, you know, Bill of Rights, Constitution, uh, from any other further encroachment. It's fundamental to who we are as Americans. Um, and I, I, I agree. Uh, we're not going to um, change the Constitution. I think we need to recognize that self-determination, liberty, and freedoms is fundamental to who we are as a people. Have that is part of my mission set when I'm making decisions on the board. Mayor Brooks? Well, I'm going to ask you the same question that I've asked the others, and that is, looking at the future of Monument, what are the two items that are of greatest concern to you when considering the future of the town? Water and growth. Definitely water and growth. Even back in high school, we did a project in Mr. Flux science class, if anyone around that long, um, <laughs> where I um, was concerned even then about water. I recognize that we're in an um, water is essential to life. So I think making decisions, sound decisions around water, investing in our infrastructure, investing in technologies, um, critical, and then growth. Um, everything I just described about what makes this town great, why I wanted to to live here um, and raise my family after traveling the world. But those qualities, that small town feel, the community feel, the safety that we have, um, that those those things I want to protect and preserve. And so that's the number two issue that, that I have. I think you've already answered my question, so uh, you seem to be the <laughs> senior candidate uh, today. <laughs> Yes, a long time. <laughs> Trustee Clerk. Again, fundamental, very clear in the Constitution that we have the right to bear arms. There's no denying that. So uh, any supposition that we could take that um, right away is contrary to our founding document. So, no, and until it until the Constitution is amended, and um, it it's taken out, uh, so right that. Yes. question um, and can I ask what would happen in this fictitious scenario if somebody did not get inoculated again I can't hear the question at all the question was what if the governor um, had a mandate that everyone must be inoculated with I'm assuming the COVID vaccine um, how would I react to that Okay, thank you. Um, so get the COVID vaccine or you could lose the ability to be a member of the community. Can't go. Ah, well, no, that would be ridiculous. Um, I would I would not support that. And I, I would absolutely resist. And every means that we as a local community had the ability to resist a an executive order or law from the state i would i would pursue that thank you mr white okay thank you uh miss yakum voss mr anderson did we have anybody online 
I'll give you a moment to check. <laughs> Some people might disagree. Thank you. We will move on. Uh, first of all, I'd like to start by thanking the applicants. Um, you know, we had over a thousand people at our last meeting and we had three show up here today. And I think that shows some dedication and we appreciate your interest in, in helping us. Um, we make some tough decisions and we get a lot of flack sometimes. And it, it demonstrates a lot to show up and still want to be interested after I'm assuming some of you were there at our last meeting. It, it says a lot to show up here and have a applica uh, letter of interest and application um, for this. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to the board for discussion. Um, Ms. Hogan, so... We can appoint somebody tonight if we would like. We don't have to appoint a, someone tonight, but we do need to appoint somebody by the 60 day deadline, which comes up when? October 1st. October 1st. And the reasoning behind that is once you pass that 60 day deadline, it requires a special election. And there is no sense when we have qualified applicants that we've seen this evening to cost the town um, a special election because that would not be able to fall within the November election, correct? Yeah, the ba that ballot has already been certified. Okay. Plus, you'd have to have a nomination time frame, which is generally 70 to 90 days before the election. Okay. Thank you. And, and again, I thank all those who uh, that showed up today. Uh, Board members, discussion, conversation? If we did that, that would require a special meeting, just so you're aware. We have a hearing on the 20th that will, it will be very encumbersome. Hours and hours. What was the request, please? Uh, to wait a week. Having been through this personally before, and watching what a waste of time and money it was, I think we should appoint somebody and being in the middle of it. I would agree because that person, if I'm correct, Ms. Hogan, whoever's appointed, would they, if they wish to stay on the board, would then need to be running at the subsequent election. Yes, if you choose to make an appointment and or if you choose to go to an election, that person's term, they would have to run again in November of 2022. Thank you. Yes. Oh, wait, I have, I have a comment about that. Um, I asked for clarification on this prior because if we were to have that person who was appointed not complete the term that trustee UNRWA uh, left, then we potentially have the ability to lose people in during the course of their term and eventually would have to run for a position all at the same time, refreshing right. the board. So I, this doesn't make sense that they would only last this, the person appointed would only last until 2022 when 
the previous the member who left their term was 2024. I agree with Trustee Lakind. You would end up if this happened more than once. You would end up with everybody running in the same election at the same election. Your I thought terms it was are still staggered. So whoever, um, I mean, the statute is very clear that when you make an appointment, it is only until the next regular regular election. That is in state statute. If you uh, because Trustee Unruh hasn't fulfilled her complete four year term, then that would leave four open trustee positions that would be elected in November of 2022. And the individual receiving the fewest of those votes gets a shortened term of two years. It doesn't mess up your staggering of the terms, but that is very clear in statute that that appointment is only until the next regular election. Okay, Trustee Lakind, uh, I believe I was confused on that also. Okay. It's just math. So it is an appointment until 2022 and then a shortened, or it's just, it's just whoever in that election gets the least votes gets the shortened term. So in November of 2022, there will, I, you know, I'd have to look at my records, but um, there should be four trustee p positions open then because this is a vacancy that would be filled by appointment that is only until the next election. So there should be the top three vote getters will get four year terms and the person who comes in fourth gets a two year term. And this happened, um, trustee Medlicott was mm -hmm. one of those. Yeah. Um, when he filled an appointment, and I believe it was Trustee Smith's resignation, same scenario happened. Yeah, and I believe it was confusing then too. <laughs> it was. Uh, when I filled your your spot, it, well, that was an election though, but it still it was the rest of your term, right? Is comments, feedback, uh, interest in candidates? Yes, they were all invited. That makes me uninterested in those two. No, no offense, but yeah, if they were invited, they, it makes me uninterested. They should have shown up if they were that interested. Yes. Matthews and Yacom Voss. What? I think you all are all great candidates and um, it's a hard choice, um, but I have a couple that I think are my top two, but I can't mention two <laughs> and I. <laughs> We will not be appointing two. That's right. <laughs> Split and <tickets. laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, uh, I uh, I am uh, very impressed with uh, Mr. White's background in urban planning. So, and the fact that he has very strong ties to the community uh, that weighs heavily in my book. So, I personally would like to support Mr. White. Uh, while all the candidates have done an excellent job, outstanding qualifications, Mr. White stands out uh, because of his background to me. Okay. Uh, Trustee Stevens, are you, con are you declaring that a nomination? Yes, if it, yeah, I'd like to nominate him. Or is this working? I'm sorry. We're taking nominations and we will vote on them individually. Uh, so we did have we have one nomination. I would like to nominate Ms. Shannon. Okay. I would like to nominate Mr. Kimple. And I, I would like to just make a comment. Well, I agree that I'm impressed also with uh, Mr. White's background. Um, specifically on the points that uh, Trustee Stevens brought up. Uh, with the Planning Commission being under a very large watchful eye right now, it would seem to me that his background in urban planning may, may be best suited on that board uh, where 
the proper language for ordinances and whatnot could be uh, brought forward to work with the planning department and then brought up to the board of trustees. Just, just my opinion. That's a good point. Can't move forward because you're needed too much where you're at. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> um, since we have um, nobody else to nominate, we will we will move to a vote starting with the nominations in order. Uh, Ms. Hogan, will you take a vote on Mr. Weiss? So are we, is this like an election vote where each of us get one candidate to vote for, or is this like an up and down vote on each individual? It's however we want to. It's just going to see how many we have for each. Um, perhaps. Perhaps Mr. Rivera could weigh in here. I think it would make a lot more sense to approach it as a motion, a motion to appoint a certain person individual okay. as a trustee and then a second and then a vote for and if it's a majority it passes um i don't really understand the process of what you're asking me to do otherwise i didn't believe rivera we needed could. a second uh mr rivera will you provide some guidance on this uh, thank you can you hear me yes okay uh you know, I, I was my thought was that the actions that you were discussing were were preliminary, um, and and that's why the, how I interpreted it, um, and, and that's why uh, I wasn't quite sure what you're doing, but I, I kind of thought you were uh, just making some preliminary discussions regarding how to move forward. But Ms. Hogan is correct. Ultimately, in order to fill the vacancy, you'd have to have a motion with a second with four affirmative votes in favor of that motion. So I want to clarify something based on that, Mr. Rivera. So if, and so that we all understand what we're doing here, okay? What you're saying is the first person that gets nominated, if they get four votes, it's done. We're not getting a chance to vote on each person and then seeing who gets the largest consensus. So that means that you watch, am I making myself clear? In other words, yes. It, and, and Okay. So that way yeah, they're I think not I, thinking, hey, I support this person, but I'm going to get a chance for the next person. No, you're not if that person gets four votes. Um, I think that's what I was getting at when I was saying that it was a preliminary discussion to figure out where the, where the support lie, lie, uh, where the support was for each particular uh, candidate. Uh, but ultimately, to pick one, you have to have four votes. And, and if you moved to s select one and that person um, received four votes, then you would have filled the vacancy. Uh, and so what you suggested was that the first person who received four, four, four votes wins. That is correct. What I thought you were doing was was uh, basically accounting for the possibility that you may have two people who have a tie. And if you have two people who have a tie, then you have to ultimately pick one of those two people to win. But if you in, in informally, but formally, you have to have four to four votes to win. Does that make sense? So I thought you were having a kind of a discussion to figure out where the support lied, but ultimately. The, the clearer and cleaner way to do it is just to say, uh, pick four votes, uh, pick get a vote, get a nomination, get a second, and get four votes. But I, I thought you were doing something slightly different. Okay, so so we need continued discussion and and a consensus of uh, a nom a nominee and a second of it. And, and it could be either way. We, we are always capable of making a, a motion if we have um, business that we want to take care of. Um, so I think for the time being, we continue to the discussion. We have all three nominations. Um, we've had some comments on <laughs> On a, a couple of them of why they were supported, uh, does anybody want to continue that com conversation? Well, I'd like to mention, let's not look a gift horse in the mouth. We've got three great candidates here, and if we are to delay this by in any form or fashion for any reason, then we might have two candidates. We might have one candidate. 
because things change in our lives. So I suggest that we just get this done tonight. Well, the challenge too is we're on a time deadline and we have a, we can't fit this into another meeting. That, that's the problem as well. I'll just make a motion to appoint Ms. Shannon. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Ms. Hogan. Trustee Clark. Mayor Wilson. Yes. Trustee Lekind. No. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott. Yes. Trustee Stevens. No. Trustee Romanello. Yes. I was not writing that down. What was that? That um, that motion passes four to do two. Ms. Shoning. Um, would we be able to swear you in this evening? Okay. Ms. Hogan, will you conduct the swearing in? Yes. Um, let's go up front. Shaning. Yes. I, Darcy Shaning, do swear. I will support the Constitution of the United States, Constitution of the State of Colorado, the laws of the State of Colorado, ordinances of the Town and Monument, and I will faithfully perform the duties of the Office of Trustee upon which I'm about to enter to the best of my ability. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. <laughs> Well, again, we thank the applicants um, and I also thank this board for moving on this item. Um, I don't, I know trustee Romanello recalls the difficulties we had last time uh, getting this taken care of and it's good to see it uh, forward and, and completed for now. Uh, that moves us on to item number seven, public comments. Do we have any public comments for items not on the agenda? Ma'am? I did get here a little bit late this evening. My name is Barbara Knitt, and I'm briefly had a moment to read through the minutes. I don't know if you guys went over the minutes for the August 16th meeting or not tonight, but I have a concern for the minutes, and I would like a motion to reconsider the, me the minutes from the August 16th meeting held at Family of Christ Lutheran Church. I'd like to uh, modify the minutes. And I ask that you resubmit the entirety of the public here. A full transcript of public testimony regarding the Metro District be included in the minutes. A lot of people presented hard facts and testimony that was totally overlooked in the minutes. Um, 
it seemed to me that most of the points that Mr. I think his name is Dykstra presented were in the minutes. But most of the comments, facts that was presented by numerous people were omitted or boiled down to very small leaps. And I don't that I don't want the magnitude of that meeting lost. You just mentioned yourself that a thousand people attended. That's monumental. Probably the biggest meeting that has ever happened in Monument. And I feel we got slighted in your just over a page minutes from that meeting. So I'd like to ask the board for a motion to reconsider the minutes from that meeting. Okay, thank you. Does that okay. conclude your comment? Will there be a motion for that? The the board can can just make any comments they would like during their board comment section. So does that conclude your comment? I guess I just want to emphasize how monumental that meeting was, how important that meeting was, how passionate that meeting was, and how the minutes don't reflect that at all. Okay. They don't reflect the number that attended. They don't reflect the detail, the research that was done and presented. If they just boiled it down to little bullets, okay. I'd like to see the entire transcript and presentation included in the minutes. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else who would like to make public comment, sir? I'm Steve King. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Mr. Mayor and trustees. First off, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for voting against the Conexus Metro District. That was the right thing to do and I applaud all of you. I would also like to publicly thank Megan Harrington, our new town planner for being willing to engage with the community and be gracious with her time. She's a welcome addition to this town. During the process of the connection of the Conexus site, I've realized how vulnerable the town has been Prior to the code changes, the largest landowners moved in front to front run the changes and rezone their property while we were under the previous town planner, who in turn directed the planning commission to approve plans that did not fully meet the comprehensive plan and allowed loosely written sketch plans that are now up for interpretation. It makes us look weak as a town. This has put the town in a position to have to defend the code and the comprehensive plan instead of having a clear understanding of where all the parties stand. In addition, the nationwide movement towards massive distribution centers and those developers of such structures targeting communities like ours with available land and great internet interstate access has further confirmed how vulnerable we are as a community. It won't take many of these to completely alter the makeup of the town. It won't take many of these to alter the lives of the citizens who may never recover from the damage they will do to our town, our property values and to the right of peaceful enjoyment. It won't take many of these last mile fulfillment centers to crush our local businesses as these mega retailers strive to obtain two hour deliveries of almost any product. We as a community need to study the effects that these centers cause to a community. We need to understand all the negative effects that they will cause. We need to move forward with a plan that regulates these uses and we need to take the time to get it right. We need to pause for a period of time to thoroughly understand just what we want as a community. The comprehensive plan speaks mostly of a way of life, a small town feel, the mountains that are backdrop. I ask you all to consider this and quickly ask to pause the development of these structures before it's too late. Thank you for your time. Thank you.
Is there anyone online, Mr. Anderson, that is wishing to make public comment? Okay. Is, uh, is there anyone else in person that would like to make public comment? Mr. Kimple. Thank you again, uh, Mayor, Board of Trustees. Just have uh, three quick comments. Number one, it was all posted today on the Town of Monument site that they have a uh, emergency evacuation drill coming up. This side. It's great. Um, still wondering what the emergency and fire evacuation plan is for the east side. When that's going to be uh, generally posted uh, status and just an update overall because of the growth on the east side of 25. Second, wondering, uh, reached out to El Paso County regarding the snow removal for Highway 105, Higby Road, and Baptist. Again, as an example, uh, the airfield manager down at Fort Carson, I've held several meetings already. We have a training drill coming up on uh, 15 September, snow removal. It's a small installation, a small airfield, but that's what we're doing. Squeaky wheel gets the attention. Highway 105, Higby, and Baptist are heavily traveled and commuted, especially getting on and off. Highway 25, the Baptist overpass. With the truck stop there last year, I think uh, many of you have witnessed yourself. Jackknife trucks at Ice Road. Just like to know that because El Paso County is responsible for the snow removal in those areas, they don't, they, in the past, they haven't got enough attention. So I'd like to hopefully that the town's reaching out to El Paso County to work that out and get attention where, it, where it's truly needed because of the increased amount of commercial and residential traffic. Lastly, still looking for the definition of access road that is not in the town ordinance several times I'm just looking to see what is the definition of access road. The word access road is not in the ordinance. When you say road, it defines street in accordance with the Colorado Springs, El Paso County. That's regarding the access road that's connecting Sanctuary Point to Glen Eagle. Wondering when that's going to turn into a normal route uh, and when Home Place Ranch is going to come online. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to make public comment? Okay, at this time we will move on to board authorization items. We do not have anything uh, scheduled for board authorization items, correct? No, sir. Does the board have any items they would like to add to a calendar or um, anything of the such? Uh, yeah, I would like to see about, um, I don't know if this is the appropriate place, but um, to the point of meeting last time, I think uh, I've gotten a number of things that we need clarification in our ordinances. So I would like to ask for at, um, in our ordinance that every time it says warehouse that we put in parentheses, see comp plan limitations. So that way it would clear our ordinance because it says very clearly in the comp plan that warehouses, I mean, semi trucks should not be used in our warehouse environments. Uh, it specifies like a FedEx or UPS style truck. But I don't think that was clear to anyone uh, until we had the hearings and everybody began to bring up, okay, here's the comp plan, here's this. So I'd like to make sure there's more clarity so we see it not only in our comp plan, but also in the ordinance. If nothing else, just a reference to say, see the comp plan. And also maybe in the comp plan, if we, at where it says no semi-trucks, we put that in bold. I don't know if that's an official change or that requires an ordinance or not but I think we need to make things much more clear so there's less confusion uh, because it became clear to me in the meeting last time that uh, what we were thinking of a warehouse that's in our comp plan and what uh, developers are thinking in uh, as a warehouse are two different things. 
And so I think we need to make it more defined. So I'd like to see some or I'd like to request an ordinance change to at the least uh, to be able to at least wherever it says warehouse. So if we have a sketch plan that says warehouse, it doesn't just say warehouse. It says C comp plan limitations. Uh, Well, yeah, I'm open to whatever. I'd like to see some type of an ordinance to clarify so we don't have the confusion that we have. My, my suggestion would be that we um, give direction to town staff to look at those items and see what work with our attorneys, see what we can put in there, how it can change and bring it back to us for discussion okay. and get a little feedback on the legal side and the planning side of what that what that all means and how to do it appropriately. Okay, yeah, I'm open to that, but I would like to see some clarification because it became, it's clear in the last meeting that uh, we had two different interpretations of what a warehouse was. The comp plan states that we have, uh, it does allow for a warehouse, but it says specifically it's it almost if you read through the comp plan it almost talks of a storage warehouse mm -hmm. where you have ups style trucks or you know non style trucks coming and going uh, as opposed to a and it specifically says no semi trucks so i i don't think that's clear in the ordinance but it's clear in the comp plan i think we need to make that clear in both places so that we don't have everybody uh, putting together a lot of, going to a lot of effort to put together a particular plan that doesn't comply, that has to. Mr. Foreman, do you think you could bring some ideas and concepts to the board at, would it be possible at the October 4th meeting? Yeah, I'm, it's fine. Or is that? You be okay with the second meeting in October? Sure. What that would be possible? Is the board in agreement with that? Sure. And also, one of another authorization thing I'd like to ask for is whatever equipment that Drew was using that night, he should throw it away and. <laughs> and so if you need uh, if you need monetary assistance let us know we'll be glad to because i know we had that same delay in the sound system here but uh then it got fixed and so when it got there i mean it was very difficult for me to understand half of what was going on it was for staff too and we realized that and drew's already working in case we have to have another uh, meeting there at that church. We're already working with their staff to make sure that doesn't happen again. Okay. Uh, and one final thing I want to bring up is uh, one issue that did come up last time um, was that um, the, there was concern among the citizens about the size of the buildings and they were concerned that this would be, I don't think this particular warehouse proposal would have been very high, but it came to our attention the meeting before last that we have a 90 foot ordinance and people were concerned. So uh, uh, every other place in the town, what is it, a 50 or 60 feet or something? 60, so I would like to propose that we have all across the town a 60 foot height limit on the building. 90 feet, I think, uh, in the meeting would, would, uh, would render uh, a building of uh, eight stories or something along two two questions on that what is the height of the YMCA I think we researched that Megan what is that it's between 35 and 40 feet from average elevation of finished grade to the the, the flattest part of the roof not including HVAC systems okay. right and then my second question was in some fashion, didn't we already address this in new code? We did. So just to remind the board, we spent $200,000 going through the entire planning ordinance uh, in the last, I think it was over the last two years. 
And so during that uh, time, building heights were discussed. And I think the planning commission suggested to the board that on the east side of town, the limits are, are they 60 feet or 50 feet? I know I'm asking you off the cuff, but they, they I, it's either 50 or 60, but they went ahead and kept the 90 feet on the west side of town. And so, and, and the board, I think, wouldn't, was it 75 that we went with? So we, so anything that isn't already in queue has to meet with the 75 feet. Yep. Is it 75? Okay. Yep. 75. Well, I'd like to propose that it be whatever, it, if it's 50 or 60 uh, on, the, on east, the east side. I would like to have the entire town to be consistent with that instead of 75 or 90. I heard one meeting I heard. So that is mm -hmm. it's pretty good. Yeah, that's that's in the previous ordinance. And so if they're in the queue, right, Megan, that uh, if they've got a sketch plan, I think in that allow it would allow them to be 90. But I don't think any of the developers we've talked to so far have any idea that they want to build a building 90 feet. But right. to your point, it would allow them to if they decided to change their mind. Well, I'm open to variances. So if somebody find builds a building out in the 60 feet high out on west side and they find they're getting struck by lightning once a week and they get a lightning pole that goes up to 90 I could deal with that you know right but uh, <laughs> but uh you know some I'm open to variances but I don't think you know just a building that's like a high rise apartment complex is is what you know, it'd be and, and mayor and the board it'd be pretty easy I think for staff probably in October or November to bring you a change in ordinance for that. That's a pretty quick change yeah. uh, proposal to the, I think we'd have to take it to the planning commission first. And so that would probably be when. Well, so Megan Harrington with the, with the planning department, um, the next planning commission meeting is October 10th, I believe. Right. And so we're getting pretty tight to get something back to, I mean, I guess it would depend on, on what the board wants. If the board wants us to come forward with just concepts for discussion as input into the larger conversation, then I think that is something that could probably happen at that second meeting in October. If the board wants a fully formulated um, ordinance that has been considered through the planning commission at one of their hearings that October 10th hearing we're getting very tight to get something on the agenda for you because from a staff perspective we would want to read through make sure we married up all of the different code sections um, look at the building heights be able to address the question of what sketch plans are um, in place currently that have a PUD or, or DP zoning that have a higher height and kind of address it from there for you and to get that formalized before that October um, staff report to the Planning Commission. Um, I think you get a better product if you give us until November for a formalized um, recommendation from the Planning Commission. If it's bring the concepts to you in October, that is com completely doable. Um, and then formalized through the planning commission in November. So it's it's up to whatever the board direct staff to do, and we will get it there. I'm in not in a super big hurry, but okay, sort of like that'd, get that'd be a lot better. In the works, and yep. then we could uh, can address it. Okay, so definitely. So good with just considering this board direction and not. In yeah, I mean, uh, I'd be okay with November to put an ordinance together. Is the rest of the board in agreement with that? Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other board authorization items? Okay. We'll move on to board comments. Do we have any board comments? Just to clarify that our next meeting is at 3 p.m. on the 20th. That is correct. Okay. Yes. Yes. I have a comment um, in regards to the increase in sales tax to help fund what the police department needs. In light of looking at the global current events, um, I think it would be 
behoove us to be as proactive as possible in making sure that our police department is well staffed and has all of the equipment and the cars and SUVs, et cetera, that they need in order to do their job properly. Um, I think that just in light of the fact that the people that are coming into our country are not fully vetted now, can end up anywhere among the lower 48. And I would never expect to think that Colorado is exempt from the non vetted people being flown to be residents in the state of Colorado. So whatever we can do that's legal from an education standpoint to make it known to the citizens of the town of Monument that this is an important initiative on the ballot. And while it might be a little bit lengthy paragraph or two to read, um, it's important. And bottom line is we want to make sure that we've got a strong police department in the town of Monument. Um, other Board of Trustee comments? Okay. Um, before we wrap up, um, Ms. Hogan, would you mind giving a little background on the difference between action minutes and the verbatim record for our um, meeting minutes? Um, yeah. Uh the Board of Trustees has given me direction to um, per, to write action only minutes with an included summary of, of some of the comments that have gone on. Um, Colorado Municipal League and Colorado Municipal Clerks Association have also endorsed um, and recommend that clerks uh, take action only minutes um, for a variety of reasons. Um, so basically, what I try to do when I'm doing minutes is obviously record the actions of the board of trustee trustees and then whenever there's a public hearing associated with an action um, summarize comments that are made um, by the applicant. But you also need to marry those with all the information that's in the, um, tr the board packet. A lot of the information is referenced when when a speaker speaking that it's actually included in the board packet. So anyway, what I do is my best to obviously capture all what what the actions of the board and a summary of what is uh, what is stated and um, also uh, bear in mind that we do take a YouTube video of every meeting and that is you can access those at any time on our website. So if anybody's interested after the fact, they can go watch the entirety of that four and a half hour meeting and it is recorded and it's kept in per perpetuity. Um, if anything ends up going you know, to court and a verbatim transcript is necessary, then we have to hire that. I'm not a stenographer, nor, nor do I have the equipment to take verbatim um, transcript of, of every meeting. And it's, it's also not necessary unless something goes to court. And if it goes to court, that transcript can be created with the YouTube video that we capture. Does that, does that help you? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I don't know that do not have the answer to that. I, I do not have the skill set to make a verbatim transcript you'd have to hire a stenographer to do so i don't know why we would when there's a video out there and you can watch the whole thing uh mr rivera are you still online yes but i could not hear a trustee clark's question will you speak closer to your microphone i have been doing that can you hear me now Yes, thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Okay. I'm wondering if there's anything in the statutes that would prevent making an exception 
to having a, a motion to reconsider the minutes of the meeting to include the entire transcript in this one instance. Is there anything that prohibits us from making an exception? Uh, I'm not aware of, of uh, anything that would prohibit uh, making uh, an exception as requested. Uh, but I think I would like to, if I may, take a moment to um, expand on on, on tr uh, the town clerk's comments. May I may I may I offer some additional insight? Of that, thank you. So, uh, Ms. Hogan is correct. Uh, action uh, action minutes are our best practices, and, and they help um, to uh, the intended the uh, the intent of the minutes is to basically let anybody know what happened. And action minutes, I think, does that. Within a within a meeting, there are often public hearings, and those public hearings um, have within them a record, and that record includes uh, the items in the board packet, uh, the uh, trustee comments, the the staff comments, as well as uh, the public comment, a and that is uh, specifically referred to and part of the record. And if necessary, then there is a process by which. Uh, that record is collected, agreed upon, and then reduced to writing through a transcription process. So, if it's necessary to do so by through a court action, we have all of the raw, raw materials necessary to do so. And I, I, it's, it's um, until that happens, it's not necessary to have um, a verbatim uh, official record. Um, I think Ms. Ms. Hogan said it best. If you want to see kind of what happened, you can look at the action minutes, and if you have more information, you can watch the YouTube video. But for the purposes of a court action, we have all the materials necessary to, to make uh, the record required by the court. We keep our records for a certain amount of time on those videos. Uh, we can already answer that in perpetuity. Yeah. In perpetuity, right? We do not delete those videos. Okay. Great. Breaking. Okay, I just wanted to say thank you for even considering me. It was an honor to be considered for this position, especially amongst such great candidates. So thank you all, and I won't let you down. Thank you. Is there any other board comments? Seeing none, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? We are adjourned.